Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to the supplemental edition of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim, the Knife Newbie Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn about knives and knife collecting. And Bob, it's our our midweek, our supplemental mm-hmm. episode, you know, second episode. Well, it's not really an episode. Second edition of the Knife Chunky Podcast. Still working on a name. You you like supplemental. I'm I'm coming around to it. But if our listeners have any uh, suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. Call the listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know if you have a a cool name for this uh, midweek edition that we're doing on the Knife Chunky Podcast. Well, supplemental is definitely neutral, kind of like the handle of a Sebenza. So maybe... Uh, Maybe that's what it is, Jim. I'm telling you, it's amazing how everything ties into a knife, doesn't it? It really does. Actually, Jim, I was at a party, uh, well, a feast, if you will. Uh, I have a friend who's running his first marathon, and it's the Marine Corps Marathon here in D.C., and uh, he had a bunch of uh, his high school friends in town, uh, four, uh, three of them, and they were all former Marines, all going to run the marathon together. Well, one of them uh, just got his black belt in... Uh, in kung fu and was and has been noodling around with Kali and we got into knives and let me tell you that's uh you know he and I it, this guy and I and an, and a third gentleman sat there and talked about knives and martial arts for about two hours until my wa- I saw my wife doing that sort of helicopter symbol with her finger like it's time to go <laughs> and uh, I was like all right guys I got to wrap this up and uh, it's sounds, I don't sounds know. like a great party wasn't yeah it? <laughs> it, it's great to get together with knife guys or martial arts guys or or, you know, where you know you can just start rambling on about this kind of abstract thing, and the other guy gets it and loves it, and doesn't get it anywhere else, and you know. Right. It's not every day you get to you get to meet another knife junkie. All right. Well, coming up on our show today, we're going to talk uh, a little bit of knife news. We've got a, a one or two stories we want to kind of talk about, and uh, then two new knives we want to talk about. And you're going, oh, yeah, great. Bob's got a couple of new knives. Well, Bob's got one. But Jim here, he's got one. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to talk about uh, uh, one of the new knives I've got. I've actually got two more coming that are already purchased, so we'll talk about those later. But uh, first of all, I want to wish everybody happy Halloween, Bob. Uh, this show is coming out on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, depending on when folks uh, find it in their feed. So Thursday, of course, is uh, happy Halloween. So hopefully uh, all of our listeners get the uh, treat of a new knife at Halloween and not get tricked by just some old candy. That's right. And and sleep with it close to the bed because you never know what's out and about on Halloween. Mm. And, and by I the was... way, Jim, I got to say, I'm, I'm, I, I feel great that you've been bitten by this bug. I mean, you have one in hand, one new knife and two in the mail. That's a two. good place to be right yeah. there. <laughs> well, and, uh, and uh, you know, my knife collecting, I, I've bought one definitely to keep. The one we're going to talk about today, I bought specifically to sell. So I come to this from the uh, the buying and selling aspect. You know, I have an eBay store, sell stuff on Amazon too. So that one, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm I, I guess I'm maybe a little bit different. I guess everybody likes to think they're a little bit different, but I'm not going to be solely buying just keep. I'm going to be trying to buy some for resale. But yeah, we'll talk about that. So excellent. Yeah, looking forward to that. Hey, but first, let's get to our Knife Life News segment. More of the Knife Junkie podcast is coming up. But now let's get the latest industry news and product drops with this week's Knife Life News. All right, Bob. One of the things, again, our listeners know if they've listened to the past couple of episodes of the supplemental podcast is that we like to uh, try to talk knife news as best we can, try to keep everybody up to date on stuff happening in the world. And uh, you want to talk about uh, Bark River, uh, something going on with them. Yeah, well, I was just on knifenews.com, a great place to find out about what's happening in the knife world. And uh, Bark River Knives has the new Shinigami Tanto coming out. And um, it is a uh, Tanto of very traditional profile. And what I mean by that is we're all used to the Americanized Tanto with this sort of chisel tip and the secondary edge and the secondary point uh, as pioneered by Cold Steel and as uh, adopted by pretty much everyone since. Uh, but the real um, traditional Tanto that was part of the part of the three sword set that a samurai would carry the katana the large sword the wakizashi the middle sized sword and then the tanto which was the dagger this is most like that small knife and that small knife did not have a chisel tip it had sort of a rounded 
almost uh well as uh the, um as knife news put it bull nose tip except uh, hmm. uh in in fighting form and so uh bark river knives has created one like this with a nine inch blade and unlike uh, the original ancient uh knives this one has a full tang so it's going to be um woods ready you know if it's a a bark river knife it's woods ready not that you're going to want to take this beautiful weapony style knife out into the woods uh but it just looks like a great modern representation of uh of one of these old school uh samurai tantos but made in a modern factory and uh you know modern mm -hmm. small factory bark river knives and just, uh, it, it looks like it's going to be a great and useful tool. Now, Bark River Knives has done other ethnic style, uh, knives, though they're known for mostly American sort of historical patterns, like, uh, you know, woods, woodcraft knives and, um, Bowie knives and this kind of thing, woods knives. Uh, they have done karambits and other kind of, uh, other kind of ethnic knives. So this will be, uh, the new Shinigami Tanta will be in 3V steel, which everyone seems to love. Because it has high toughness and high edge retention, and it'll be a full tang, like I said. Mm -hmm. So, so you can take it out and thump on it, or you can hang it on the wall. Basically, yeah. it looks really cool. So, without uh, actually having held one yet, out of a uh, five knife uh, or five star, you know, five knives, uh, what what would you think it would get? Three three knives, four knives, five knives. I would say, I mean, five. I I have held other Bark River knives, and I have a, I have one left over from all that I had at one time. Mm -hmm. And they are outstanding knives and beautifully built, beautifully conceived. And then the materials they use, you know, the first ones always come out in uh, black micarta. And then they start, uh, you know, once there's some response, uh, they come out with all the uh, uh, exotic handles, different woods, different materials. Moving from that to high endorsement, um, I know it's not going to be a rant show like it was last week where the Knife Junkie went on a rant about uh, several manufacturers and knives, uh, but uh, you also had a change of heart last week about a couple, uh, maybe a, a change of heart or at least some improvements to the Gerber flat iron that you want to talk about? Yeah, but first let me say, you haven't heard a rant until you've been at the DeMarco house uh, on Christmas after, you know, good, good-spirited rant, of course, but... Uh, Hmm. I, I think I kept it under control. <laughs> okay. I don't know what has that, that has to do with uh, <laughs> Christmas. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so Gerber Flatiron. I, I put one of the few videos up on my channel uh, where I was um, panning a knife. And it was the Gerber Flatiron because I was so excited about getting this knife because it. I find it v visually beautiful. Hmm. Uh, it's this, it's a, kind of blend between a straight razor and a tactical folding, modern tactical folding knife. And just very appealing to me. I personally, I saw it in Dick's for 40 bucks. I bought it and was just let down from the moment that clamshell package was opened. Hmm. And uh, it, it's it's very difficult to open. It's like impossible to open one-handed. And uh, it's very uncomfortable to hold and to squeeze and to use. And it's got a uh, a clip that looks kind of cool, kind of looks like the AD10 clip, but it's just short and painful and uncomfortable. And overall, it's like a, it's a great concept for a knife, but it seems like they just drew it and, and stuck it in a machine, had it made and never, never felt it with their mm -hmm. hands or tried to open it up. And so, uh, I guess they heard the public outcry and, and to Gerber's, uh, defense, they're a big company, but they were nimble enough to actually, um, change up the design uh, oh. in response to um, the needs of the users, mm -hmm. and uh, so they. So there are a couple of visual ways that you can tell that you are now getting a new and improved Gerber flat iron. Now I got this information from Cutlery Lover, one of my absolute favorite uh, YouTubers uh, about knives. Uh, been following him for ten years. Great guy. Uh, but he just got uh, one of these new Gerber flat irons and, and he put this out there that uh, visually you can tell if you're getting a new and improved one, which um, allows you to open it up one handed with your thumb without any trouble. Uh, it has a, a new and improved uh, lock bar uh, over travel device and uh, the interface with your thumb, you know, where you where you actually unlock the knife is now less like a saw. So. Hmm. Um, one of those ways, uh, visual ways, you can tell the hole is further down the blade, further away from the pivot, and the logo now rides between the pivot 
and the opening hole. Uh, so it's behind the opening hole okay. as opposed to bef- the earlier ones, it's in the front. All right. Another visual cue is that the lock bar over travel device or the lock bar stabilizer uh, on the last one was the sort of uh, sort of traditional hinder- hinderer style circular over travel device. This is now like this big giant. Uh, I-, I personally don't like the way it looks, but it's a good visual indicator that it's the new and improved version. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's like a big plate over there. And then again, like I said, the it's it's easier on the thumb when you unlock it. Well, and if you go to the knifejunkie.com slash fifty five, the knifejunkie.com slash five five, that's where we have the this episode of the podcast, show notes and that kind of thing. We're actually gonna uh include a link to the video by Cutlery Lover so that you can uh, watch that as you're listening to this podcast and uh kind of see some of the things Bob is talking about along with the the video there from Cutlery Lover. Uh, A couple of more knives we want to talk about, Bob, in our Knife Life News segment and uh, kind of ties on to one of the knives we talked about last week when we you talked about a sprint run. And I was going to talk about the Spyderco Manix 2 limited run as well as the Spyderco Shaman, uh, Shaman, Shaman. Uh, But the Spyderco Manix 2 limited run, Brown G10 M390, when I went to knife ship free, it was already out of stock. So I guess that... uh, proves the power of a, of a limited run. Folks really want to get their hands on something that's that's limited edition, if you will. Yeah, well, the uh, the Manix 2 is an awesome, proven knife. People love that knife. And uh, then to get it in a, a new G10 color, um, mm. which I love, that brown G10, but most especially an M390, which is such an amazing steel that everyone loves. And uh, to get such a, a utility-style knife with that awesome utility blade, blade steel, which hardly ever goes dull unless you're really jamming on it for a long time. Uh, that seems like a perfect marriage there. Uh, Spyderco, another knife you wanted to talk about? Uh, oh, the Spyderco the, uh, Shaman? Yeah, well, the, the new crew wear Shaman with the Shaman. With the, um, with the natural canvas uh, tan micarta. Just looks beautiful. And I don't ha- have one, and I've been kind of uh, wanting one for two years now, and this might be the, the one. I don't have any blades... Uh, made of crew wear, and I'm just a sucker for, for the tan canvas. I I, I think I'm kind of superficial, Jim. It's really the looks <laughs> of that knife that just makes me. Right. But I know that the substance is there too. So you know. <laughs> well, you talk about uh, the looks. I I am I'm definitely one of those guys, and uh, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you. Uh, a lot of the interview shows you do, you in your lightning round, you say form or function. Yeah. Uh, e- e- explain that question. Uh, what what do you mean by form? Is it the looks and function? Is it because of the functionality? What I'm really trying to get at is what? how do you spend your money? Do you buy something because it really looks cool or do you buy it because you know it's going to um, perform a certain perf- task? Yeah, exactly. And I think where most uh, knife people, knife junkies, knife collectors head to is that Venn diagram, that that little area where the two circles intersect. Mm. And and it looks beautiful, but you also know that it's not just looking beautiful. It's going to uh, perform amazingly. Right. Because actually, if you're being uh, really honest about it, you can find some beautiful looking knives from, I was going to name a couple of companies, but from from companies that are less than reputable or make knives that are less than high performance. You can mm. find some beautiful designs, but when that intersects with... Uh, superior performance just knowing for me personally just knowing that that potential resides in that knife or in that blade steel is comforting even though i know i'm never going to unlock the potential of m390 hopefully well it comes back to and you know pardon me for not remembering the guest who said it but uh, that confidence of having a knife in your pocket pocket and then that confidence of knowing that knife will perform what it needs to if you do need it. Yeah, that was, that was Greg Medford, yeah. That's right, Greg Medford, yeah. All right. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Well, do you want to talk about our new knives? <laughs> yes, Jim. <laughs> Bob always that. likes to talk about <laughs> new knives. Uh, and you've got a gorgeous one you want to talk about, but I want to, I want to throw my little one out, out there first. Uh, I am buying knives, as I mentioned. Uh, not only for me, I've got uh, one coming in the mail that's uh, going to be a keeper for me, but uh, the Colt Serengeti Skinner, uh, Japanese uh, manufacturer, uh, of Jan- Japanese manufacturer, looks like it's a limited uh, run, limited edition. It's numbered 580 out of 1250, 
and uh, bought that specifically for resale. Again, kind of going into my my resale background, but uh, that's um, I guess other than my um, uh, Victorinox Swiss Army knives, mm-hmm. that's the only knife in my collection that I haven't been uh, that I've bought that I haven't been given uh-huh. by, <laughs> by by someone to be unnamed the knife <laughs> junkie Bob DeMarco. <laughs> But uh, yeah, your thoughts about the Colt Serengeti Skinner that I that I purchased, Bob, and and we'll have pictures uh, up on the show notes page at thenifejunkie dot com slash fifty five. So this is another knife that I would never actively seek out, but you keep showing it to me, and and it is actually really a beautiful knife. And knowing that it's Japanese made, to me, uh, I like that because they're impeccable. Um, you know, in my experience, Japanese made knives, especially you know from the nineties onward. Uh, or the, I guess the, the eighties onward were just really beautifully made and, and, uh, stout and well finished. But in looking at your knife, uh, and I, I'm not a hunter, uh, um, I would like to be maybe in another life or right. maybe later. <laughs> uh, so I have no actual use for a hunting skinner, but this knife that you have actually looks uh, like it would be a great for fighting too. I gotta say, it's got a gut hook on the back, mm-hmm. much like, uh, sort of Indonesian style, um, fixed karambits will. And, uh, so, so you can get, uh, get some action on the backswing, if you will. Mm-hmm. It's got a beautiful belly to it, uh, for, for the skinning. And then it's got, uh, some of that, uh, Spiderco style, uh, serrations up front, a little three inch run, it looks like, mm-hmm. or a two inch run. It's a beautiful knife, and the sheath is really beautiful, and it's not overly branded, which I like. It says Colt yeah. on the blade, which is cool. Right, right. But a lot of times, uh, um, well, I have seen a lot of knives made for firearms companies, and they look overbranded. Cold, cold, mm. cold, cold. <laughs> this one doesn't do that. <laughs> Wherever you could put the logo, it's there, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I like it, and, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that, I don't know, it, it could be an interesting addition to my collection. I don't think it will be. Well, you never know. Maybe it'll be an interesting addition to someone's collection. I, uh, yeah. you know, I didn't know a whole lot about it when I bought it, but, you know, I did a little bit of, you know, preliminary research on, uh, you know, just places I'm familiar with, like uh, eBay, you know, solds and, and those kind of things. And uh, it seemed like I could make, a, you know, a couple of bucks on it. So uh, vintage Colt CT7B Serengeti. Japanese gut hook skinner, fixed blade, hunting knife. It's got a it's black black uh, leather sheath. It's even comes with the still has the original cardboard um, cover that goes over the knife when it comes in the box, and I have the original box as well. So I don't know I, that kind of stuff to me. You know, like the original box, some some paperwork. It had a little ad where the the knife was originally sold. You know, that kind of stuff is what what I like about collecting. So. Well, it's new old stock too. It hasn't been used, mm, which is, yeah. and it could be very useful. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could buy it and use it for sure, but yeah. that's the kind of thing I would buy and like keep because of all the side things you say. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, enough about me. Let's talk about the knife junkie. You, you've kind of teased this on a couple of uh, podcasts. I've got a new knife coming, you know, from a guest we had on. I'm not yeah. going to tell you who it is yet, but. I think you're ready to let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, well, I, I already have on YouTube. I couldn't couldn't wait. But yeah, I Greg Lightfoot, uh, one of the guests on this show, legendary uh, tactical folder maker. Uh, he first started on the scene in the early '90s when when uh, when tactical folding knives were first kind of becoming a thing. And uh, I ha- asked him to make me a knife, <laughs> and he, and he did, did. This, this beautiful <laughs> element. And and he made it just how I like it. You know, I'm a sucker for my carta. He made it with my carta. He made it. Uh, the blade is CPM 154. And actually, this is my first CPM 154 blade. I have uh, a lot of uh, 154 CM, which is the non-powder metal- metallurgy version of that steel. So I'm very. I love that blade steel. I'm very excited to have this uh, CPM 154. And it is just. Oh, and 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 it's got a Chad Nichols Damascus pocket clip. And, uh, really, I will refer you to the video. Uh, this knife is just amazing. It, it really, okay, I have to open it there. Okay. <laughs> it really does. It, it's very evocative of a shark. We were talking about some of, uh, Greg's design, um, inspirations, and he's really inspired by natural shapes, especially those in aggressive 
seafaring fish like sharks. And, and this, uh, this element just really, really looks like a shark. And I've always had a, an affinity for sharks. Uh, as an artist, it was my first, uh, um, recurring motif. You know, I, I drew sharks for years and years straight when I was a kid. And, and so to have something with a shark logo on it, that's Lightfoot's logo and a blade and a handle that are so evocative, uh, it means a lot to me. What also means a lot to me is that, uh, Greg and I started talking back and forth during the, the making of this. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's great to get to know makers on this show and to get to talk to them, but to continue that dialogue afterward and into the creation of a custom made knife for me, it was just a, a wonderful experience. Similar to that of, uh, being with Douglas Esposito, talking with him and having my first custom knife, that fixed blade fighter, uh, gentleman's fighter made. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this element, it's, it's a liner lock and the liners are about as thick as a frame. If you were to have a titanium frame lock folder, um, the liners look thicker than the frame on my, uh, Spiderco Spidey Chef, for instance. Big, fat, beautifully, beautifully, uh, blasted titanium liners and then thick slabs of green micarta on the outside. This knife is such a chunker. It feels amazing in hand, and uh, this is the kind of knife that where you have it in a full fist grip, there's no way on earth it's coming out of your hands. Um, not that I will ever do anything with it that will merit such a, such a grip, because I'm going to baby this thing. I've decided. Mm -hmm. I've, I've carried it every day since I've gotten it. Oh, wow. But I've also carried my bug out if I have to cut something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm kind of carrying it around as if I bought a... a Jackson Pollock painting and really loved it and just kind of carried it around with me so I could uh, gaze at it and admire it all day. Mm -hmm. So, Jim, this having this knife uh, has really, um, I, I don't know, it's really accelerated my thinking, my ref, my reduce and refine thinking. As far as, far as the uh, refining part of it, I guess. Exactly. I, or, I, I or, want or, more of the, the reduce to have to be able to refine. Exactly. I, I really want... Uh, to experience more handmade knives. It really feels like a work of functional art. Now, it was a, a funny story getting this to me because uh, the day Greg Lightfoot sent this to me, he sent me a, a text picture of the, sh the shipping label. Mm -hmm. And I All looked right. at it and it was the wrong damn address. What? And I was like, oh, no. And then so I look at the email that I sent him with my address in it. Right. And I typed the wrong damn address <laughs> in my email to him. You're my, so excited, your my fingers stupid just... thumbs. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an old guy, you know. I can't text like these <laughs> these new kids do. Um, and so I realized I had sent them the wrong. So I look it up because I'm like, okay, this is still in the neighborhood. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna introduce myself to this neighbor, make sure they know me. I'm gonna right. give them my business card and everything. And you know, when this comes, you'll call me, and you know, and I will bring you cookies or whatever, you know, to try and make it worth his while. Because otherwise, you could see. A, a random box showing up. Oh, I guess I have a new knife, you know, like, yeah. Oh. Or, so, or worse yet, send it back to whoever it came from and then it get lost in the mail oh, going back or whatever. Or so. customs. So, uh, oh, that's right. Cause, cause it was he's coming up in from Canada. Canada. Yeah. That's right. So I go, I drive around and the address doesn't exist. So I'm like, well, okay, this is better. At least it will go back to him and we can work it out and he can resend it. But as I'm driving into the neighborhood, uh, I, I took a way I usually don't go. And it's a good thing I did because I see a DHL truck. And I'm like, I never see DHL. Hmm. But I know they do a lot of international stuff these days. Uh -huh. And uh, and so I, I kind of uh, block, them, block them with my car and roll down the window. I, Are you looking for Bob DeMarco? He's like, yeah, I am. And <laughs> I, I jump know. out of the car. And in the <laughs> middle of the road, we do this transaction where he gives me the package from the van and and, I, you know, I don't care what's going on That's around cool. me. <laughs> so, I, had, I had not heard that part of the story, yeah. It was 100% serendipitous. I could have been, I could have gone the way I usually go every day into my neighborhood, and I right. totally would have missed this truck. Uh, the package would have gone back. I still wouldn't have had it. Oh, know? man. So, yeah. there you go. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. A harrowing man. story. <laughs> so, not only a great knife, but a cool story to go along with it. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, uh, well, I'm, this is going to be featured in a number of videos. Numerous it's, videos, it's I'm a, sure. It's such a great knife, and it makes all my other knives, even my Hinderer XM24, when, you know, my prize knife, makes it feel puny. 
Well, if you want to see the uh, the video Bob did on his new Greg Lightfoot video, uh, night, uh, Greg Lightfoot knife, and more videos to come, be sure to watch the uh, Knife Junkies YouTube channel. That's at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. You can catch that in future videos there. You'll also want to make sure you subscribe to the Knife Junkies YouTube channel. That way you don't miss any of his videos that are coming out. And click that uh, little bell notification. That way you'll be notified anytime a new video comes out. Or if the Knife Junkie is going live on YouTube, which mm. is something we're thinking about. So uh, if you uh, would like to see the Knife Junkie go live every once in a while and do some uh, specific chats about uh, different things, uh, give him an email, bob at thenifejunkie.com, or leave a voicemail message at the listener line, 724-466-4487, 724-466-4487. Uh, any show ideas or anything you'd like to see Bob uh, go on YouTube live and, and chat about. So, Bob, final thoughts as we wrap up uh, the Knife Junkie supplemental for this uh, last week in October. Uh, well, no final thoughts except that uh, I'm just now I'm on the handmade knife train and I, mm. I just feel it and i'm now i'm i'm looking with a more critical eye at what i have and and uh, do i need all this uh doing the arithmetic as as alex from alex's knife box was saying how often do i actually carry this you know if mm. i divide it by how many days in the year and, and i'm really starting to think that way and uh, we'll see what happens i don't know well thanks everybody for listening to the knife junkie podcast and visiting the knife junkie.com it is the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting and we appreciate you being here with us on episode number 55 of the knife junkie podcast supplemental thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at review the podcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website the knife junkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on youtube at the knife junkie.com slash youtube check out some great knife photos on the knife junkie.com slash instagram and join our facebook group at the knife junkie.com slash facebook and if you have a question or comment email them to bob at the knife junkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast